welcome back to Before the Bell, direct from the ring, Singapore. I'm now going to introduce to you a hero from Malaysia. This guy is the current WBC light heavyweight Asia Continental Champion who will be defending his title on September the 29th here in Singapore, live from Marina Bay Sands. So without further ado, let me welcome Miraj the Miracle Khan. Hey Miraj, how What's are up, you? Scott? Good to good, see good, you. Good, good. Thanks for joining us here. Miraj, are you ready uh, for September the 29th? If defending your title. If I weren't ready, I wouldn't be putting my title on the line. <laughs> okay. this, this, this belt is going back with me on that day. Mm -hmm. What do you know about your opponent, Jono Taylor? You know he's quite a heavy hitter and he was a former IBO champion from New Zealand. A lot of talk about this guy having big power. Does that bother you at all? You know, you're going to get in with a, another guy that can potentially, you know, make things very, very difficult for you? Power plays a big role in boxing, but I feel like it's not enough. Yes, this guy has a lot of power. Out of seven wins, he has six knockouts. So I have to watch out for his right hand, especially he's, he's, he's very powerful. But his hands can't hit what his eyes can't see. <laughs> and his, the big problem with him is it looks like he's too stationary. It looks, it looks like as if his feet are stuck in mud. You know, he's <laughs> just like stuck there. It's like moving so slow, moving underwater. Yeah, so yeah, he's yeah. a good boxer, don't get me wrong. He can punch very hard. He's got a good combination, good variation. Okay. But he's just his foot, his, feet, his footwork is too slow. And how is preparation going for this fight? And I know you train over there in Malaysia with Alex Volodin. You've trained with him for the last 10 plus years. So what's preparation been like so far? And what, what's in your process and plans to defeat Jono on September the 29th? Uh, I can't reveal too much. It's a bit of a trade secret, but we train hard as usual. My, my coach is a Russian coach. We, we do a bit of uh, unorthodox, old school Russian training, which I'm not going to go into because yet again trade secret. And maybe after the fight, I'll reveal some, but, but we train hard. We, we do speed and combinations as usual, but I study his videos and he, this guy is a bit too slow and he's, he doesn't have the reach. And he doesn't have the good looks. <laughs> well, there we go. Yeah. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you take that. <laughs> so let's, let's go back. Let's go back in time to recent time and what I put you through in the last three fights against, you know, Chase Haley in, the, in a trilogy that not many people see unless they're kind of, you know, a Toro Gatti and Mickey Ward and you're already world champions. And yet I made you guys fight this out on this trilogy when you're both like top 200 in the world. I mean, tell me all about that journey against Chase and, yeah, do you think it's Honestly, made you a better Chief, fighter? Chase was a very tough nut to crack. Honestly, I have proven. I feel like I have proven myself with this guy that I've mm -hmm. beaten this guy, and hopefully the trilogy is closed. I do not want to date him again. <laughs> and honestly, I think Chase is a much smarter fighter than this, this next opponent yeah. than Jonathan Taylor. Yeah. I'm facing. He's much more technical. He's mm -hmm. faster. He moves around more. Mm -hmm. He's smarter. But the only thing Jonathan has is power. I mean, personally, I, I've had the pleasure in, in seeing you develop as a fighter. And I've known you now for probably 10 years, you know, and, and now I'm your way promoter. Too long. <laughs> as some say, right? Yeah, okay, way maybe, too long. maybe. But I mean, you know, I, I'm taking it to this next level now and giving you these better and better opponents and more opportunities. And on a lot of the fans and people who go to, go to Ringstar shows and, and like to see what I'm providing right now have all told me, hey, you know, uh, Miraj Khan's got a lot better. He's actually improved from the last fight with Chase Haley. And a lot of disparity that was created there was that Chase didn't get any better, didn't change anything, yeah. and yet you changed everything. I feel like each fight he showed up and it's exactly the same. Mm. Whereas me, every fight I show up, I try to make sure I evolve in some way. I change something. Okay, this is not working. Mm. Next fight, I change it. So each fight I show up, I'm more of a different fighter than I was before. Mm. So if you were to fight me two times, the first and the second time, it was like fighting two different people. Yeah. And of course, the people of Singapore has been supporting me a lot. I have fight, I've been fighting in Singapore for quite some time and, and that has given me the motivation and I feel like I'm ready for this step up in challenge. And honestly, Jonathan Taylor, I think is a worthy opponent. He's not too high up there, but he's really, really gradually mm -hmm. pushing me up. And, mm -hmm. and, and I feel like maybe by this year, end of this year, hopefully, or next year, I should be somewhere in the top 100 in the world. Good. I mean, look, Miraj, we know you're a funny guy. You know, the press likes you, I like you, people like you, you know, you're entertaining. And also, you're one of these kind of fighters that, you know, it, it, 
can go either way very, very quickly. You're susceptible for the for the hooks, you know. Yes. You have been knocked out. That, that, that is my weakness. The thing is, I I try to put on a show more than just to win. Sometimes, uh, this, especially with the first Chase Haley fight, I would be like, you know what, oh, let's do this. Let's give the crowd what they want. But I notice nowadays, the more I fight, that you know what, winning is also just as important. But I try not to sacrifice too much of the show factor because people like to watch me because because I have that pizzazz, you know. So I try to drag them in and and uh, give them what they pay for. Mm. But I'm just trying to think with this guy coming from New Zealand. You know, he's known as a, a hard-hitting hard New Zealander. Yes. You know, you must be really preparing for. I guess that's that's what the people want to see, right? Mm. They want to see, oh my God, is he going to make make it through this fight yeah. or not, right? So that is what is attracting the people, you know. When when I fight, people are like, oh my God, it's Mirage's turn to fight. Is he gonna actually gonna pull it off again? Is he gonna pull off a miracle? That's what my nickname is about, the miracle, you know. So <laughs> I go in there, you do not know, you don't know what's gonna happen. Oh man, he might get beaten up, mm. but then out of nowhere, oh okay, he's outclassing the guy. So, and it's entertaining to watch and... Uh, yeah. Good. I mean, also you sparring recently, and last time you sparring with one of the top ranked guys in the world, Azibek. Yes. Uh, you know, and he's, uh, he's super middleweight, middleweight. He's slightly smaller than me. He's currently ranked number 20 in the world. Yeah. But he's a very good fighter, Azizbek, and mm -hmm. he's, he's... I think that is also one of the reasons why I won the previous JCD fight, because usually I show up to fights without any sparring. Mm -hmm. And I would really appreciate it if I could get more sparring with this uh, with this guy. But the problem is also my size. You see, mm. in Southeast Asia, in Asia, generally, first of all, it's hard to find opponents, yeah. sparring partners for a yeah. big guy like me. Yeah. So I'm really, really, you know, fighting like extra hard just to mm. survive in this sport. Even though I'm in the same show as Ridwan and all, but mm. I'm in the, uh, more of in the shadows. Mm. But I'm I'm in no rush. I'm abiding my time, and sooner or later, the people will see my word. Yeah. I mean, you're a great guy, right? I mean, you're a great champion. I mean, uh, I've seen you doing a lot of TV with me recently, especially over in Malaysia with Astro and the other guys. And, you know, you've always got some funny things to say. And I think the last press conference with you and Chase Haley, I mean, had everybody you know, everybody laughing. And you've got that kind of wit about you. I'm sure you want to bring that A-game again to the next show. Of course, of course. I'm going to bring, the, I'm going to bring my fist and my sharp tongue. <laughs> Those are my two weapons. Perfect. What message you got right now? You know, if you got to say a message right now, you ain't got to tell it straight to me, tell it straight to the camera. But you know, what message now would you say to Jonathan Taylor from New Zealand? Jonathan, um, make sure you move your feet, bro, <laughs> because I am going to be dancing around you. And I think let's let's put on a great show. Let's just stay humble. Is that it? You don't say I'm going to knock no, you out. I, I don't need to trash talk because <laughs> my my fans know who I am and what kind of fighter I am, and you know I'm not really a guy who goes out there and just. Uh, insults people and trash talk people and, and put them down. But in the ring, we are you know we are supposed to meet each other and fight each other. Uh, regardless what I say here, in the ring we are still going to do what we do. Yeah. And I am going to put on a show. And if it means beating you up, I'm going to put you down. You're a great champion. I wish you all the best of luck on 29th of September. I hope that this belt uh, goes back with you. You know, and also I wish the same luck to Joe No Taylor. But uh, it's a pleasure having you today, my friend. Thank you, and, Scott. Uh, see you More on the 29th. All the best. Miracle out. <laughs>